What's going on guys, it's Quizzy Dog here, and in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at another Hisense TV. This one is going to be officially named the U88G, and this is going to be simply one step down from their flagship model for 2021, and this looks to be a banger. So if you're not looking for a 75 inch TV with the dual cell, pricing hasn't been announced as of yet, or at least that I'm aware of, pricing will be in the video description or pinned in the top comment once I find out more for the Canadian market as well as the US. But if you want to kind of ball out on a budget, it looks like the U88G may just be your guy. So I've got some press conference notes here. Again, like the previous video, if you came here after or if you're here first and you're going on to other specification-based videos, um, we are gonna be reading off the laptop just a little bit with these notes. It's easier than trying to remember all of the information and we'll have some on-screen annotations as we move along. So looking first at the U88G, this will be a 65 inch TV. And taking a look at a couple of my notes here, it looks like it will be available in 55 as well. Uh, for now, we're just gonna be talking about the 65 inch because that's what I actually have more catalog notes on. So as we kind of go up and down through the notations here, I do wanna start off by saying that this is a, a full array backlit, um, full array local dimming powered TV. Uh, safe to assume like the other product lineups that it will be a VA panel as well. It does have a viewing angle rated at I think 178 degrees maybe. 178 degrees, yes. Um, so for the full array local dimming zones on the 65 inch, we do have uh, powering this display. Um, bear with me. Uh, 360 zones of full array local dimming. I don't know what it's gonna be on the 55, I believe 132, which is what we saw on some previous models and contrast was still fantastic on those, but on the big boy, we are looking at 360 zones for the full array local dimming, which is absolutely fantastic. Last year on the Q9G, also known as the H9G for the US market, we saw that cap out at 180. So we are effectively doubling that, which is fantastic. And that had fantastic blooming control and contrast and everything like that. So the uh, full array local dimming, that is going to push up to 1500 nits. Now, I haven't seen this, but safe to assume, just like last year where they were kind of said to have about a thousand nits, but truly measured at like anywhere between 1100 and 1400, maybe we're gonna see this even exceed 15. 15 and, and whatever they advertise as the peak brightness I find in the past anyway, historically with Hisense and their VA panels, um, tends to be an, an underestimation. So we'll see, maybe we'll know more in the future when we get some of these TVs maybe in hand, whether it's in my local market and I can get it in the office, or if by chance we see some other press coverage. Um, now this panel will have 120 hertz and I'm gonna skip ahead just a little bit and confirm to you guys that yes, this does have native 120 hertz built into the panel and yes, it does have HDMI 2.1. Now 2.1 was something that we wanted to see last year in their flagships for 2020, but I just don't think it was possible. Um, the TVs were good. Some did have 120 hertz, but you couldn't really take full use of that panel. So good news is, yes, it is here this year, and we're gonna go over all of the juicy, fantastic things that the HDMI 2.1 specification can do on the U88G, both for the 55 inch and the 65 inch. Now for HDR processing, we have Dolby Vision IQ, HDR10+, Plus, which is returning, and HLG support. So all very, very great to see. Um, Dolby Vision, yes, of course, we talked about that. Um, upscaling, so just like their entirety of their product lineup this year, even going to their smaller guys, we do see up to 4K upscaling for uh, any content that's recorded in a 
lower bitrate or a lower resolution. And historically, Hisense has done a very good job and has been rated up to today very good with their upconversion engine. This will be running um, Android TV. I don't know what version, uh, definitely not the new one to my knowledge, but again, we'll we'll learn more as time progresses and as we get in, but this will have all of the things like your Netflix, your Disney+, Plus, everything that you can come to expect from Android TV as a native OS. This will have a Farfield microphone as well that was first introduced last year on the Q9G and H9G. Some people love it, some people hate it, but you will have that physical switch to turn it off if by chance you do not want to use it. The remote control this year as well will have that microphone built in, so it's your choice which one you want to use, if either at all. Um, so it does have an equalizer for audio, it does have game mode, and as far as picture modes, we see vivid standard energy savings, game, sports, theater day, theater night, and filmmaker. And I, for one, am interested in learning more about that filmmaker mode because that is making its debut in 2021 on these panels. Viewing angle, 178 degrees. Again, I would safely assume that this is a VA panel. This will have uh, Google Assistant, Amazon Alexa, voice controls, DLNA, everything like that that you could come to expect. Um, audio enhancements, we do see Dolby Atmos, IMAX Enhanced, and WISA Ready. And that's something that I'm going to get into maybe within the annotations when I learn more of exactly what that is. Some of you may care, some of you may not, but that's there. Uh, Bezelless Design is back this year. Bezelless Design has kind of been a staple of the mid to high range Hisense TVs for the last couple of years and I for one am totally behind it. It looks fantastic and it's very easy to clean as well. Um, 55 inch will have VESA mounting options for 400 millimeter by 300 millimeter and the 65 is 400 by 400. Um, I know the 55 inch for this guy right here, the uh, Q9G, not a very heavy panel. So safe to assume that we're gonna see maybe slightly lighter on this year's model as well. Other than that, uh, Bluetooth is going to be returning as well. And I wanna talk again about the HDMI 2.1 because we did a video, if you haven't saw it already, on the dual cell, the ULED XD, also known as the U9DG, having all four HDMI ports being a 2.1, which is awesome. Not everybody is there just yet with audio video receivers having enough HDMI 2.1 ports for all of your supported needs. We've got the Apple TV 4K debuting at the end of May. We've got the Xbox Series X. We've got the PS5. We've got 3000 series RTX graphics cards. There's so many things that finally this year are HDMI 2.1 compliant to take advantage of high refresh rate and different things like that. Uh, on this panel, we are seeing two HDMI 2.1 ports and two HDMI 2.0 ports. So I would have liked to see more, but of course, keeping the cost maybe a little bit lower in this model by just having the two and two might have been the best play for them. Uh, Wi-Fi is of course here being a smart TV. It is lacking um, Wi-Fi 6 or Wi-Fi AX. So we are seeing just the uh, 802.11 AC dual band returning on this panel, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. So no uh, Wi-Fi 6, but that's okay. Uh, the Wi-Fi the AC or 2.4, 5 gigahertz last year was more than enough for any of your streaming needs. Um, motion rate. So we talked about 120 hertz already. This will have a motion rate 480 option for extra smoothing. The Hisense chipset did a very good job last year with that additional smoothing. So I expect that to be back this year, but we are seeing them rock the response times this year. So I believe last year their top tier model uh, capped out at anywhere between, I think it was like mid 11 to 12 millisecond, depending on how you were measuring it for response time. We're seeing this year's model, the 65U88G coming down to six milliseconds. So that's with support of a couple of things that we're gonna get into in just a second. I'm gonna change my notes here and we are going to go into what makes that possible. So 
on this year's model with HDMI 2.1 across both of those HDMI 2.1 ports, we have variable refresh rate finally on a 2021 Hisense TV. A lot of people were upset that the uh, Q9G or uh, H9G of last year had a 120 hertz panel but did not have HDMI 2.1 or any of the modes to take advantage of the 120 hertz. So we will see a variable refresh rate, we will see FreeSync, we will see eARC, we've got ALLM, which is uh, auto low latency mode, uh, we have the automatic game mode, all of these are going to be a thing this year. And I, for one, am totally, totally behind that. I think that's gonna make things fantastic for you at home gamers that are using this in your primary entertainment or living space for next gen consoles or even for things like the new, again, Apple TV. The introductory price point of that is very attractive and rumors are that uh, content providers such as uh, Red Bull TV will be recording things in native 120 frames per second for let's say high action sports. So having the ability to output that onto a 2021 high sense in the, the true form is gonna be absolutely fantastic to see. Other than that, we see two HD or two USB ports, one being 3.0, one being 2.0. Again, I hope that the 3.0 does have a slightly more power output. We're seeing a lot of things that are powered by USB or by uh, AC to USB, like the um, the latest Chromecast Ultras, the Chromecast with Apple TV, that needs to be plugged into an AC outlet to actually get enough power to fully spec that for the 4K delivery. And I, for one, I, I can't plug anything else into my power bar. It's just, it's already maxed out. I'm gonna blow a fuse if I have anything else plugged into the wall. So I'm hoping that we see a, a little bit more voltage come out of that 3.0, but time will tell. Um, output, we have two 10 watt speakers. I think anybody or the majority of people that are getting into a TV this powerful will probably have a sound bar or an AV receiver. eARC, again, is here this year. So you're gonna be able to output proper sound codecs finally from the HDMI into your uh, supported receiver or supported sound bar to really take full advantage of that. Um, TV withstand, 56 pounds, and that's rated for the 65 inch. That's not terrible at all. That uh, again, I for one am going to recommend that you have two people installing this if it's gonna be on a wall mount. Um, I am stubborn and I typically do it by myself. And I know that the Q9809 or 9808 from 2019 was heavy. So I struggled on that. I don't know how many times I almost dropped that. Please don't be a me. Um, get some help. 65 inch doesn't sound that daunting, but when your arms are stretched out beyond the confines of this lens that I'm using to record this video, that weight is uh, a little bit more, feels a little bit more than 65 pounds. Um, other than that, not a whole lot. Again, I'm going through my notations here, 1500 watts, peak brightness, uh, QLED. Again, we're gonna see that return. That's kind of a given. Um, that looks to be about everything that I have on this guy here. Color management system is all gonna be with the Hisense chipset as well. Um, now that's something to very quickly go over because I've actually had the privilege uh, of using the last couple of years of Hisense TVs. And so far, the uh, Q9G, the Q8G, also known as the H8G and H9G of last year, they're aging absolutely fantastically, pretty well flawlessly when it comes to the chipset and how everything runs. The Q9809 or Q9808, whatever it's called, um, not so much. Um, the chipset on that is really severely lacking in power. Uh, I, for one, am actually using that because it's my biggest TV um, and it is still held up well as far as picture is concerned. I'm gaming on it, no problem, but I find that I now have to utilize uh, a Chromecast Ultra versus the built-in OS on the TV just because we're getting some sluggish nature. To try to get all of the audio codecs, all the video codecs, and all the processing done in online streaming, it, it lags, it chugs. Hopefully we don't see that on this year's release. Uh, again, last year seems more favorable with their top tier TV. So I hope that extends into the 2021 releases. So with all that being said, that was everything that we know right now about the U88G coming in the flavors of 55 inch and 65 inch. I will update the 
um, pinned comments as well as the video description when we know more about what's going on with pricing, with availability, with launch, all of that good stuff. But so far in my plethora of notations that I have, this is what I have to share. Press conference was today. We're trying to be first to market with some of this information. And who knows, maybe we're actually gonna cover some other TVs in the future. That's actually all up to you guys and your support on these videos. So until my next video, guys, my name is Crazy Dog. You guys have been awesome and we'll catch you all in my next one. Take care.